Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us continue with our study of irreducible uh, subsets of a fine space. So, uh, we saw we have just seen uh, in the last lecture that the condition that uh, the 0 locus of an ideal is irreducible is that the radical of the ideal is a prime ideal ok. And uh, so, let us let us uh, uh, look at some examples uh, in fact also examples of uh, uh, the Zariski topology how it looks like. So, in fact uh, the, the Zariski topology is uh, very special when you take uh, uh, A1 namely the, uh, the affine line uh, which is K itself endowed with the Zariski topology ok. So, let me make a few statements. So, uh, uh, consider so, let us so let, let, let's look at some examples. Uh, these, are, these are general examples about uh, also about the Zariski topology and also about uh, irreducibility. So, so you first uh, consider uh, uh, A1, this is just K with the Zariski topology. Now, uh, so what is the 0 set of A1? What is a closed subset of A1? Uh, a closed subset of A1 of A1 uh, is Z of uh, S, where uh, S inside K of X1 is, uh, is a subset. this is the definition of uh, a closed subset ok. So, S is a bunch of polynomials in one variable ok and uh, and of course you know if you want this closed subset to be non empty you should assume that the ideal generated by S is not the whole ring uh, instead of S is non empty if and only if the ideal generated by S is not the whole polynomial ring ok. This is essentially uh, uh, one of the versions of the null still ansatz ok uh, a rather weak form of the null still ansatz which says that you know the, the if the uh, the 0 set of an ideal is uh, non empty if the ideal is a proper ideal ok. And uh, so, so in other words uh, the, the elements of S do not generate a unit ok. And uh, in fact, uh, you see what are the what are the irreducible closed subsets of uh, uh, A1? The irreducible closed subsets of A1 are uh, going to correspond to prime ideals in Kx1. Okay, and so so the irreducible closed subsets. of uh, A1 correspond to 
out of the form out of the form z of p where p inside k x 1 is a prime ideal okay. But then you know if k is a field then the polynomial ring in one variable over the field is a uh, is a p id it is a principal ideal domain uh, that is every ideal is generated by a single element and uh, uh, and you also know that in a p id uh, every uh, non zero prime ideal is also maximal okay. So uh, the only chances for p are either that it is the 0 prime ideal okay uh, and the other chance is that it is a maximal ideal okay. So uh, so p so p is either uh, 0 or a maximal ideal okay this means this means that uh, uh, the 0 set of p is uh, is is correspondingly k1 because uh, if you take 0 set of 0 okay the set of uh, all points which uh, at which the function 0 vanishes then you will get all the points. So when p is 0 you get a1 or uh, a, a single point lambda belonging to k okay. because uh, 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 the maximal ideal will look like x minus x1 minus lambda okay. So if p is uh, if p is 0 then the 0 of p will be a1 it include all the points that in particular tells you that a1 is irreducible okay. Uh, if you use the fact that uh, the 0 set of a prime ideal is reducible and if p is a prime ideal which is not 0 then it has to be a maximal ideal and a maximal ideal is of the form x minus lambda x1 minus lambda for some lambda in k I told you this is also uh, another version of the uh, null silence adds but actually in this case because it is just in one variable you do not need the null silence adds okay uh, you, you just have to use the fact of uh, fact that k is algebraically closed. So uh, you know uh, the fact is that uh, if you take any ideal okay which is a proper ideal then you see because it is a principal ideal domain this ideal will be generated by single element and therefore the 0 set of this ideal will be just the 0 set of a single polynomial okay. So uh, uh, and then the 0 set of a single polynomial uh, will be just uh, uh, the union of the 0 sets of the linear factors of the single polynomial any single polynomial uh, is uh, can be broken down into a product of linear factors because k is algebraically closed and each linear factor will correspond to a point. So what you will get is that the only closed sets are just finite subsets of points okay. So, uh, so that means the open sets are just complements of finitely many points. And from this you can see that uh, you take any two open sets they will certainly intersect which is what you should expect because any two non uh, of course I mean any two non empty open sets because uh, you already know that a1 is irreducible. So any two non empty open sets have to intersect but the fact is any two non empty open sets uh, are just complements of finitely many points and but there are infinitely many points. The reason that there are infinitely many points is because an algebraically closed field is always infinite a finite field cannot be algebraically closed okay. So, uh, so the <laughs> so let me write all that down uh, uh, since um, k of x1 uh, so let me write here here it is for p is equal to ideal generated by x1 minus lambda. Uh, since k of x1 is a p id principal ideal domain uh, any ideal is generated by a single element any 
any ideal is generated by a single element. Uh, so, z of s is just z of ideal generated by s is just z of f for uh, some uh, element f in the polynomial ring okay. But since uh, since k is algebraically closed f can be written uh, as a product of linear factors uh, the number of factors will be equal to the degree of f of course I am assuming that uh, uh, f is not uh, 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 the constant polynomial it is not a constant polynomial because uh, if uh, f is of course if f is a constant polynomial 0 then you will get the whole space <laughs> if f is uh, a non zero uh, constant then uh, the ideal generated by f will be the unit ideal it will be the whole ring and the zero set will be empty okay and the empty set is always a closed set <coughs> by definition okay so uh, since k is algebraically closed uh the the uh, f is uh, some ideal generated by f is just uh, ideal generated by uh, x x1 minus lambda 1 uh, times x2 minus x1 minus lambda 2 times uh, x1 minus lambda m okay and uh, which implies that the zero set of s the zero set of f is just the u is just the union of all these points lambda 1 etc up to lambda m of course i am putting the set theoretic notation some of the lambda is could be uh, repeated they would be multiple zeros of the polynomial but the fact is therefore that any closed set is just a finite subset okay and uh, uh, and you know uh, what this will tell you is that see this will tell you that uh, 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 you do not at least as far as a1 is concerned you really do not need to use the null stone sets to get all these results okay you do not need to use the null stone sets. So uh, uh, because in a null stone sets is kind of uh, is redundant it is it is it is superfluous in the case when n is equal to 1 when n equal to 1 uh, null cell size is just uh, the definition of uh, what an algebraically closed field is okay so you really do not need the null cell size so all this can be uh, directly seen the moment you define Zariski topology uh, even without using null cell size okay. So in particular for example uh, how do you see that a1 is uh, irreducible uh, one way is of course uh, uh, from the general theory you can say a1 is reducible because the zero set because the ideal it is the ideal of a1 is zero okay and zero is a prime ideal therefore uh, uh, the zero set of zero of the zero ideal uh, is reducible namely a1 is irreducible that is one hi fi way of uh, seeing it but more easier way of seeing it is that you see if a1 were reducible then you should be able to write it as a union of two closed sets two proper closed sets but you see any closed set is finite. So if you are able to write it as a union of two proper closed sets that means you are saying a1 is finite but a1 as a set is just the field. So uh, saying that a1 is reducible is the same as saying that the field has finitely many elements but that is not possible for an algebraically closed field an algebraically closed field is infinite therefore the fact that an algebraically closed field is, in, is infinite will all automatically tell you in this case that a1 is irreducible okay. So note that uh, note that since an algebraically closed field is infinite uh, uh, a1 has to be irreducible. So in this case everything is uh, very easy to see just because of the fact that every ideal is just generated by a single element because it is a principal ideal domain okay. Um, and you know uh, I want you to really think you see 
let us uh, put for k complex numbers okay put for k complex numbers and take complex numbers are usual topology okay <coughs> you complex numbers is just the r2 uh, the xy plane if you want okay if you, you can also think of it as the argon plane okay the the point is if you take if you think of r2 in the usual topology see there are so many closed sets okay there are so many closed sets for example uh, you take a disc and then you take its closure that is a closed set uh, you take a rectangle and take the closure that is a closed set you get all kinds of closed sets. But you take uh, uh, C with the Zariski topology then the closed sets are only finitely many points you see you see there is <coughs> uh, so the open sets are complements of just finitely many points it is just uh, the uh, the open sets in the Zariski topology for uh, complex numbers is just the plane punctured at finitely many points the huge open sets okay and the closed sets are just finitely many points so you see it's a you see there's such a huge difference between the ordinary topology and the zariski topology and you can from this also see that the zariski topology is highly not highly non hausdorff okay because hausdorffness is a condition that given any two points i can find open sets which contain these two points and which are disjoint from each other okay I can do that in the usual topology you give me two distinct points on the complex plane then you know uh, I can find two small enough open disks surrounding those two points uh, which will separate these two points the two open disks will not intersect. But if you try to do that in the Zariski topology you will not be successful okay that is because uh, any two non empty open sets will intersect. So you cannot find two disjoint non empty open sets containing two given distinct given points. So you see the Zariski topology is highly non hausdorff and you know this leads to uh, uh, thinking uh, in a in a philosophical kind of way you see uh, the, the topological spaces which are not hausdorff are not well behaved okay because the hausdorffness is uh, if you look at it from the topological point of view it is the fact that you know uh, if it is it is the uh, uniqueness of limits okay. So in topology uh, the existence of limits uh, and the uniqueness of limits put together is what is called as completeness okay the completeness is the property that limits exist okay for example uh, uh, when you take subspaces of the euclidean space you know completeness completeness is just the fact that you take any cauchy sequence in that subspace its limit should also belong to the subspace so uh, and of course the limits the limit of a sequence is unique so you get the existence not only of the unit uh, of, of the limit but also that the limit is unique okay but the truth is that the uniqueness of the limit alone if you take it out uh, as a property and forget the existence of the limit it is this unit uniqueness of the limit that is promised by uh, a host of space okay now uh, so the fact that complex the complex plane with the um, Zariski topology being non hausdorff gives you the feeling that it is uh, somehow there is no uh, uniqueness of uh, limits if they exist. Now the, the, the answer to that is uh, 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 is that you should not uh, think that way in algebraic geometry the notion of uh, uh, uniqueness of limit is not hausdorffness it is another property and that property which is the analog of hausdorffness is called separatedness okay. And so uh, the nice thing is though the complex plane is not Hausdorff it is what is called separated okay so, and separatedness is the right analog of uh, Hausdorffness in the uh, uh, you know in the Zariski topology. So what you should understand is that though at the outset uh, it looks non Hausdorff but for all practical purposes there is the analogous property of separatedness which I will explain later okay um, yeah so fine. So uh, so the next thing that I should look at is uh, 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 yeah and in, and in fact uh, let me also remind you of a, a fact from 
you know field theory if you have a finite field okay then the algebraic closure of the finite field is uh, is countably infinite okay this is one fact so it is infinite and if you in general if you have any field then the algebraic closure uh, uh, if the algebraic closure will have the same cardinality as that of the original field if it is if it is infinite okay uh, then the uh, the algebraic closure uh, of the field will have the same cardinality as the field itself okay this is a this is a fact it is just a counting argument because uh, you get the algebraic closure by putting in zeros of all polynomials in the field after all algebraic you go to the algebraic closure of a field because you want to solve all equations you want to get zeros of all polynomials with coefficients in that field and uh, but then the polynomials uh, when you look at zeros of polynomials the polynomials can be counted by degree okay. So you can see that somehow uh, you will get a countable union of uh, uh, subsets uh, uh, which are just as the same cardinality of the field and then you will see that you will again get uh, uh, the union will again be the same cardinality as that of the field okay. So uh, this is a fact that you can look up from any you know standard algebra book okay. So that will so, so let me repeat if the field is finite then its algebraic closure uh, will be uh, fin infinite and countable if the field is infinite then its algebraic closure will be infinite and have the same cardinality as that of the original field and why I am saying this is uh, is also uh, uh, since I brought in the idea of algebraic closure I should tell you why this is important this is important because you see uh, we somehow uh, in this course we are only worried about algebraically closed fields but you know you can write equations over fields which are not algebraically closed okay for example real numbers then uh, what is the theory the theory is that first of all uh, whatever equations you write uh, you can always go to the algebraic closure of that field and work there and for this you need the existence of an algebraic closure and this is a theorem in algebra from field theory which says that given any field you can find an extension field a larger field which is algebraically closed and which is algebraic over the given field namely that it is gotten from the given field by just adjoining roots of polynomials with coefficients in the in the given field okay. So this existence of algebraic closure tells you that no matter uh, what bunch of equations uh, you are trying to uh, look at zeros of uh, over a field that all that will always make sense over the algebraic closure of that field and when you come to the algebraic closure of the field you are in this situation and you are doing variety theory okay. So this gives you a uh, this gives you uh, an idea how to proceed if you are having equations uh, over a field which is not algebraically closed okay that is one thing and the, the other thing is that uh, many of these uh, results that I have written down are not true if you remove the algebraic closure property okay uh, that should be obvious to you because you know this is the algebraic closure property that gave rise to that is needed for the null Stellansatz. So and you know the null Stellansatz is somehow you know indispensable in uh, all the main statements that we are making so if you remove algebraic closeness that is if you take a field which is not algebraically closed you will be in lot of one, one could be in lot of trouble. So uh, the so so the, the simple example is uh, you know uh, uh, if you uh, for example you know if you if you take an equation like uh, uh, x1 squared plus 1 equal to 0 which makes sense over the real field you know that first of all the 0 set is empty if you consider the affine space over the real field because there is no 0 the zeros are they are complex roots so the 0 set the 0 set of a polynomial might might become empty okay might turn out to be empty uh, and that demonstrates the failure of the notional sets if you work with the field which is not uh, algebraically closed. The other thing is this fact that if uh, if uh, if you start with the prime ideal then the zero set of the ideal is uh, uh, is irreducible that also kind of goes goes wrong for example if you take uh, the uh, 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 if you take the polynomial in ring in two variables over r the reals the field of real numbers uh, let us call the variables as x and y okay then if you look at the polynomial x y minus 1 whose zeros are the is that is the locus of the rectangular hyperbola then you can see that of course it is in two pieces okay 
it is certainly not connected right. But the ideal generated by x y minus 1 will certainly be a prime ideal because x y minus 1 is an irreducible polynomial okay. And you know in a, in a unique factorization domain an irreducible polynomial uh, an irreducible element will always generate a prime ideal. Therefore the irreducible polynomial x y minus 1 will generate a prime ideal in R of x y but the 0 set in A2 of R which is R cross R will be the rectangular hyperbola and that is not connected okay. So here is uh, so so the, the fact that the 0 set of a prime ideal is irreducible is uh, uh, is contradicted it is just because you are working over real numbers which is not algebraically closed. So you should always remember that when you are uh, uh, all these results strongly depend on the fact that the field is algebraically closed. Okay, so uh, so let me write that down. Note that uh, if uh, uh, k is not algebraically closed, uh, uh, many of many of the important results. Uh, obtained so far may not hold. Examples is for k equal to r real numbers okay uh, uh, x squared plus 1 ideal generated by x squared plus 1 uh, so let me write it as uh, uh, in R x is prop is proper, but Z of this in A one R is uh, is 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 empty. Okay. Similarly. Uh, x y ideal generated by x y minus 1 in R x y is uh, is prime but uh, z of x y minus 1 in A 2 R is is not connected. So uh, and if a subset is not connected it cannot be irreducible because irreducible is very very strong. So if the field is not algebraically closed you will not get many of the important uh, results here okay. Then the third thing is to look at uh, 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 I mean just to look at the whole affine space if you look at the whole affine space then uh, you will of course get that uh, Uh, the whole affine space is reducible uh, uh, for n greater than 1 uh, a n k is also irreducible since uh, it corresponds to the corresponds uh, <coughs> to the 0 ideal. 0 ideal in polynomial ring which is prime okay and you know of course uh, uh, the 0 ideal in a ring is a competitive ring with 1 is prime if and only if the ring is an integral domain and you know that the ring of polynomials in n variables over a field is an integral domain that is a product of 2 polynomials cannot be uh, 0 without uh, uh, either of the polynomials uh, being 0. You cannot have 2 non constant polynomials uh, whose product is 0 that can never happen okay. And uh, more generally the fact from competitive algebra is that you know if you have a if you have a competitive ring and you look at the polynomial ring over that competitive ring then the uh, 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 
if the original ring is an integral domain then the polynomial ring in n variables over that integral domain is again an integral domain okay this is a fact that you can check. So more generally instead of k if I put an any integral domain then the polynomial ring over that will continue to be an integral domain okay. So uh, so this is uh, this is one fact and okay so uh, maybe I will continue with, with my discussion and for that uh, so I will go I will go to what is called as uh, uh, noetherian uh, decomposition. So I will go into what is called as noetherian decomposition. So this is another important feature of uh, of irreducible uh, closed sets. Uh, okay, it is the in some sense it is the analog of uh, the uh, noetherianness of a of a commutative ring. Okay, so uh, uh, you know uh, so so let me make a definition. Uh, a topological space uh, X is called noetherian if it satisfies DCC for closed uh, sets okay. So uh, DCC is uh, uh, is abbreviation for descending chain condition okay and what does what does that mean it means the following thing if you have a sequence of closed subsets uh, which is becoming smaller and smaller okay a descending sequence of closed sets then that sequence has to uh, stabilize beyond a certain stage. Okay, it has so in what it means is that if you have such a sequence then beyond a certain stage all the sets occurring in that sequence have to be the same. Another way of saying it is that if you if you are going to look at only uh, strict sequences namely a sequence in which every next set is a strict strictly smaller subset of the previous one then it has to be only finite length you cannot have an infinite length sequence like that and uh, the actually uh, uh, I should tell you at the outset what this uh, uh, what is the importance of this topologically the importance of this topologically is uh, the uh, this gives you a handle on being able to define the dimension of a space okay. You can define uh, the whole uh, uh, notion of dimension of a space uh, can be uh, defined uh, if you have this notion. So, uh, you know, uh, so it's if you think of linear algebra, okay, then suppose you have an n-dimensional vector space, okay. Then if you take a sequence of subspaces, then you see that the sequence of subs subspaces has to stabilize. In fact, if you take a sequence of strict subspaces, then you know it has to stop, because as you take a stricter subspace, the dimension falls, and the dimension can't go below zero and the zero dimensional space will be just the, the zero vector a single point okay and it cannot go below be, beyond that. So you if you have a if you have a vector space of dimension n and you take a, a sequence of uh, strictly decreasing subspaces then you know you can get only something of length n plus 1 starting with the whole space which is n dimensional then a hyperplane which is n minus 1 dimensional then a hyperplane that which is n minus 2 dimensional and you can go on up to 0. So that will give you uh, n plus 1 terms from 0 to n okay and it cannot be any longer than that. So, uh, so in the same way what you are doing for a general topological space is that you are of course in the case of vector space you have subspaces okay but in a general topological space what you do is you do not use subspaces but you use closed subsets okay and that is the uh, that is the difference but the fact is that this this DCC allows you to define dimension okay. So uh, so uh, so let me write that down 
uh, given uh, 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 sequence of closed subsets uh, uh, f1 or let me use z1 uh, containing z2 containing z3 okay there exists r or there exists m uh, greater than or equal to 1 such that uh, z m equal to z m plus 1 and so on. So, the sequence of uh, a descending sequence of closed subsets at some point has to become constant ok. Of course, uh, the other way is that if you have a strictly de descending sequence of closed subsets that has to be a only finite only f it, it cannot be infinite ok that is another way of saying it. So, let me write that also uh, ok yeah. So, I am continuing here uh, another way way of saying this is, is that any uh, strictly descending sequence of closed subsets has to be finite that is uh, given z1 properly containing z2 properly containing uh, z3 and so on uh, uh, the the uh, sequence uh, has finite length finitely many terms ok. So, this is this is another way of saying it ok. A, stri a strictly decreasing sequence of closed subsets uh, has to terminate it has to stop ok. And uh, uh, so, you of course, uh, 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 the main purpose of this is uh, I told you is that uh, it allows you to define dimension ok uh, and uh, but there is something more it gives rise to uh, what is called uh, uh, noetherian decomposition ok. So, uh, so let me so let me write that uh, probably I will erase this part of the board, but proper probably before that uh, let me do the following thing let me uh, uh, let me convince you that uh, 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 the 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 affine space is no ethereum ok. So, the, the affine space a n with the Zariski topology is no ethereum and uh, the reason is because this no ethereum condition uh, on the affine space actually translates uh, if you apply the uh, if you apply the this if you apply the i uh, uh, function to the ascending chain condition on ideals of the polynomial ring which holds because the polynomial ring is no ethereum ok. So, uh, that is uh, that is in a jiffy uh, saying that uh, the the affine space is no ethereum ok. So, so let me let me uh, so let me write it let me write it like this uh, geometric. So, there is again a geometric and there is a commutative algebraic and and the geometric thing is uh, so I will I will use uh, the following are equivalent ok uh, uh, for a topological for a topological space x number 1 x is no ethereum ok 
which is uh, DCC for closed cells ok. It satisfies DCC for closed sets. Number two, uh, the you know, uh, but before I come to number two, let me let me take the case when X is uh, uh, An, okay. If you take so I, I go from this picture to this picture on this side I am writing it only for any general topological space but I am going from here to here only when uh, uh, I am looking at an okay and what happens is that you see uh, you will see that again the following are equivalent uh, uh, for uh, uh, number 1 uh, k x1 etc xn satisfies ACC for ideals okay. So, this is I mean this is uh, you know this is a, this is one of the definitions uh, of for a ring to be no ethereum for a commutative ring to be no ethereum uh, ideal should satisfy the ascending chain condition okay. And uh, and this polynomial ring is certainly no ethereum because that is because of the Hilbert basis theorem or the or M E no ethereum theorem that if a if a given ring is no ethereum then the polynomial ring in finitely many variables over that ring is also no ethereum okay. So, uh, you see this corresponds to this but then if you look at the definition of a there are several other equivalent uh, formulations of the definition of a no ethereum ring. Uh, of course, the, the there is one other definition which says that if you give me any non empty collection of ideals it has a maximal element. So, this is another condition so, so any uh, non empty collection of ideals in k x1 etc xn has a maximal element ok. And you know uh, uh, usually uh, it is a zones lemma uh, axiom of choice uh, kind of argument that tells you that uh, you know these two are equal right uh, and so you see the point is that there is something corresponding here the corresponding thing here is you see uh, ideals uh, if you take a n ideals correspond to closed subsets. So, you know the translation of that will be any non empty collection of closed subsets has a minimal element because you see the the uh, the when you take a n into pic the picture on the commutative algebraic side you will take uh, you are actually looking at uh, k of x1 etc xn which is the which is the ring of functions on a n. So, uh, ideals correspond to closed subsets and you know uh, uh, maximal uh, maximal means with respect to inclusion they will correspond to minimal subsets because the uh, because this correspondence is uh, uh, is inclusion reversing. So, in fact it is true that for a general topological space also that is correct that uh, any uh, this condition that x satisfies DCC for closed sets is equivalent to any uh, uh, non empty collection of closed sets of closed subsets. Uh, so, of course, here I mean closed subsets. Uh, has a minimal element ok. Any non empty collection of closed subsets has a minimal element and you know but you can write something more here and what you can write more is just because in this case you have a topology the complements of closed subsets are open subsets you can also say that any non empty collection of open subsets has a maximal element ok because that is just the complement of this open sets are just complements of closed sets. So, in fact I can also write any non empty collection of open sets open subsets has a maximal element ok. 
so uh, you get that also on this side okay so um so it's clear it's clear that uh, it's immediately clear from this comparison that uh, an is an Eutherian topological space with this Zariski topology so uh, so I will I'll just draw a line here and say clearly an is an Eutherian topological space and and you know let me let me tell you uh, again uh, but I will I will come back to this in a later lecture and that is you see the whole point about uh, this noetherianness is to study finite dimensional noetherian topological spaces and I and you know by any uh, amount of intuition uh, even by common sense you should expect that the dimension of an must be n okay you, you, you should expect that and that is what we, we have to prove okay. But for that uh, you know there are, there, are, there are two things first of all you should know how to define dimension okay and then you have to prove that the dimension is n okay and it is very easy to define what dimension is what you do is that you imitate what you did for uh, uh, what you see happening for a vector space of dimension n if you take a vector space of dimension n if you take the longest possible strictly descending sequence it will have n plus 1 terms starting with the full space of n dimension and ending with the uh, 0 subspace which is 0 dimensional there will be n plus 1 uh, terms. So what you do is you define the dimension of the topological space to be uh, you take uh, sequences like this strictly descending sequences and take their lengths and take the supremum we have to use the word supremum because there could be uh, 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 I mean uh, you could have uh, larger and la you could have lengths of any uh, I mean you could have uh, sequences strictly descending sequences of any length okay. See the definition of noetherian only tells you that if you have a strictly de descending sequence it has to be a finite length but it does not tell you that the e lengths cannot exceed a certain finite quantity. So you could have sequences uh, different sequences each of different finite lengths and the with the lengths increasing going being unbounded. So uh, uh, you you take all possible uh, sequences like this strictly decreasing sequences and take their length okay and in fact you should take length minus 1 okay uh, because you know uh, if you go by the vector space uh, analogy then the length of a strictly decreasing sequence max uh, 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 the largest possible strictly decreasing sequence is n plus 1 terms and you have to take away 1 from that to get n which is the dimension of the vector space okay. So, so that is how you define dimension and then after you define dimension you will have to show that uh, dimension of an is n this is what you want okay. So what you what you what you should try to understand is that on the geometry side you see uh, we have the Zariski topology and now we are talking about dimension which is a topological property okay. So you know this is the this is the this is how you start studying the topology of varieties okay and as I told you this is the first step in geometry you look at you look at some topology look at the topological properties try to talk about dimension connectedness reducibility and things like that try to understand what are the closed sets what are the open sets and so on and so forth and then after you have done enough topology then you start worrying about more complicated things like uh, things that are you know uh, connected with analysis like you know tangents uh, tangent spaces and smoothness and singularities and things like that okay which also we will do in this case okay. So uh, what I am trying to say is that at this level we are still looking at the topology okay and uh, so um, uh, so I need to I need to tell you um, I need to tell you also one more thing. So you might wonder uh, how how this notion of dimension is going to translate into on this direction and the topological dimension on that side of a n being n is going to translate into what is called as a cruel dimension okay named after uh, the uh, commutative algebraist cruel uh, of this ring okay and the cruel dimension of this ring is n 
and that will correspond to the topological dimension of the affine space okay. So we have to translate all this uh, to things here and to prove that the cruel dimension of this is n you need some field theory and some commutative algebra which I will recall okay. So that is to indicate to you uh, how this is going to go about alright but, but apart from that what is this thing I started with I started with this noetherian decomposition. So if a topological space is noetherian the nice thing is that uh, every non empty closed subset has a, a noetherian decomposition okay and that is kind of uh, uh, the importance of having a noetherian topological space okay this break you can you can break up uh, uh, any closed subset into a finite union of irreducible closed subsets such that no uh, which can be made unique up to permutation of the factors uh, in such a way that uh, uh, if it can be made unique if you assume that none of no, no one of these is contained in some other okay. So it is a noetherian decomposition that is very important so let me write that down that is a theorem and we will probably uh, look at a proof of that uh, the next in the next uh, lecture. So, so theorem if x is a noetherian topological space then any close subset uh, any non empty close subset y of x can be written can be decomposed as y is equal to y1 union y2 union and so on ym and where the yi's are irreducible closed closed <coughs> subsets and this decomposition is unique and the decomposition is unique up to a permutation of the uh, sets uh, appearing provided no y i uh, is contained in in some in in, a, in another y j this is the theorem on noetherian decomposition if you have a noetherian topological space you take any non empty closed subset you can break it down into irreducible closed subsets and finitely many of them and you can make uh, the decomposition unique if you assume that there are no redundancies that is no yi is contained in some other yj okay and if you believe this theorem what this will tell you immediately is that uh, since an uh, the affine space the Zariski topology is noetherian it will tell you that any closed subset of an namely the zero set of an ideal can be broken down into a finite union of affine varieties any irreducible closed subset of a any any closed subset of an which may not be irreducible it can be broken into a finite union of irreducible closed subsets and you know the irreducible closed subsets are called the affine varieties and and uh, therefore you get a decomposition of any closed subset into a fine finitely many affine varieties and those finitely many affine varieties are called the irreducible components it is just like uh, in topology when you have a space which is not connected you know you can break the space down into union of its connected components okay in the same way what you can do here is that uh, an irreduce uh, any uh, any subset 
of a noetherian topological space any closed subset of a noetherian topological space can be broken down into irreducible components and these irreducible components are closed. So these yi's are called the irreducible components of y okay uh, then the yi's are called the irreducible components components of y okay. So I will I'll end with this and I will just make a, a final remark to tell you that you see the notion of uh, noetherianness uh, has is essentially needed on one hand to make sense of dimension okay and on the other hand it is very helpful because it allows you to break down any closed set into irreducible closed sets in a nice way okay and that for us is important and all this for, uh, for us is important is because uh, you can talk about dimensions of affine varieties okay uh, and you can also break down any closed subset of uh, uh, affine space into uh, uh, its irreducible components which will be affine varieties and which will be essentially unique okay. So that is the importance of the noetherianness and so this is the geometric part of it but if you come to the commutative algebraic part of it what is it it is just the usual noetherianness of the polynomial ring. So you see uh, this is the uh, beauty of algebraic geometry that some nice property on one side gives rise to properties on the other side which have nice consequences. So after all the the fact that the polynomial ring uh, is noetherian okay is a completely commutative algebraic property but when you translate it to geometry you see the advantage is that it allows you to define dimension okay and we are eventually going to prove that the dimension of an is n as you would expect okay and it also allows you to decompose any closed subset into affine varieties okay. So you see this is how uh, you see how a nice uh, commutative algebraic property translates into such nice things in geometry okay. See this is this is essentially the attraction of algebraic geometry to go to take something on one side and try to go and investigate what it means on the other side you get interesting things on the other side and uh, here we are going from this from the commutative algebra side to the algebraic geometry side okay. So I will stop here.